Greetings all. Yes, I am standing in front of my shelves this time instead of sitting down, and that means that this is going to be a short one, and I just couldn't be arsed to clear off my desk. Uh, this one is not going to be of huge interest to anyone who doesn't care about current US Army doctrine and organization, but I thought I might digress a little bit from my normal routine and move into current affairs. Those who have been around a while may recall that there used to be lots of different types of infantrymen. There was your standard 11 Bravo, a rifleman, then the 11 Charlie, a mortarman. Those still exist. But back in the day, there was also the 11 Hotel, the heavy weapons infantrymen, the guys that ran the tow missiles and the likes, and the 11 Mike, the mechanized infantrymen, oriented around operating with Bradleys. These last two went away decades ago. Yes, there are people who have joined the army and retired out with their 20, never having met an in-service 11 Mike or 11 Hotel. They were folded into 11 Bravo back in October 2001. At the time, the US Army was in a bit of a generalist phase. A good infantryman was capable of operating as a leg or as a mechanized infantryman. Presumably, managing 11 series infantry would also be easier as any 11 Bravo could be used to fill any other 11 Bravo space. They just needed to take a conversion course for Bradleys or jump school for airborne and so on. The Army was actually doing something similar with armor officers. Getting a Ranger tab was highly recommended for new armor second lieutenants. A good armor officer could be a cav scout in an airborne unit and then move to command a tank company. A broad range of experience was considered desirable for professional on-the-job education for future commanders. Now it's not as if the individual skills went away. To replace the 11 Hotel, Infantry Branch created HULIC, the Heavy Weapon Leaders course, to teach subject matter experts in the use and tactics of the heavy infantry weapons like tow and javelin, who could then take their skills back to their units and teach others. Infantry Branch retained the Master Gunner School for the 25mm Bushmaster, found on both cavalry and infantry vehicles. And of course, folks would have to take a Bradley course before they could operate one. But still, a rifleman could find himself aerosol one day and mech infantry the next at the whim of the service because they were all coded 11 Bravo. Now, of course, whilst this did provide well-rounded infantrymen, it also meant that subject matter experts were a little bit more rare. A rifleman might be just be starting to figure out the details of the Bradley before being yanked to go be a striker crewman, for example. The army has apparently decided that this broadening business was a mistake, something I'm generally in agreement with as it happens. Armor branch officers will be given a better opportunity to specialize, and the army's looking at creating a more focused core of permanent Bradley crewmen with a new MOS. Interestingly, as these guys are going to be full-time tracked vehicle personnel, they're going to be armor branch, not infantry. The new MOS, which has been approved and can now be recruited for, at least if I understand my discussion with the chief of armor correctly when I spoke with him at Benning a couple of weeks back, is 19 Charlie. Now, there are probably some of you scratching your heads going, but I'm a 19 Charlie. The code has already been taken. Well, no. The word didn't exactly get around, but the officer codes of 19 Bravo and 19 Charlie went away in October 2016. See Smartbook DAPAM 611-21 Table 2-5. All armor branch officers are now 19 Alphas. A lot of the systems were not updated, so I still show up as a 19 Charlie in a lot of them to this day, but officially the AOC is gone. So the 19 Charlie is now going to be a Bradley crewman. The first tranche are likely to be 11 Bravos, who currently have a Bradley operator certificate, but I'm sure some 19 Deltas might reclass as well. Their job will be to transport the infantry platoon and support it. They will operate in what is known as the Armored Assault Company. Now, you may recall that the current mechanized infantry platoon is a rather ugly sort of structure. Three squads and a platoon leader, uh, plus a replacement Bradley crewman for if the platoon leader dismounts with his rifleman, are split up as passengers amongst four Bradleys because each Bradley cannot carry an entire squad. Total of 28 people. Well, that is changing. Now, a rifle platoon is a full 33 people. So that's a standard three nine-man squads, plus the platoon sergeant, platoon leader, RTO, medic, and a medium machine gun team. But how 
If there are only seven passenger seats in a Bradley, are you going to carry 33 men? Easy! More Bradleys! Six Bradleys to the platoon. That means 18 men permanently assigned to Bradleys plus 33 dismounts. And it also leaves a couple of spare seats for hangers-on, such as a PSYOPs guy, JTAC, reporter, or anybody else. Now, for those of you who can count, we're up to 51 people. That would not be a small platoon. Even 18 people just in the Bradleys are more than the standard tank platoon manning of 16. Well, the army thought of that. There are two platoons. One armoured platoon, one infantry platoon. The Bradley platoon, they're all 19 series, including the lieutenant. The infantry platoon, well, obviously they're all 11 series, including the lieutenant. You can probably figure this is going to have a number of knock-on effects. Add a second infantry platoon, well, you need a second armour platoon to carry them. So now we have four platoons in the company. And they have decided to hold it there. There is no third infantry platoon in the armoured assault company. The captain is an 11 series, by the way. The XO can be either, and they're looking at 19 series for the first sergeant. Also in the headquarters section, as I heard, was a section of two 60mm mortars, for whatever use they are when there are 14 25mm cannons in the company. Bradley Master Gunner would presumably fall to Armour Branch as well. And another question is, if there's only two platoons in the company, how do you start cross-attaching to Armour Infantry Company teams? Interesting question, I haven't seen the answer. Now, doubtless, some of you are thinking to yourself, because what I started thinking to myself, and what everybody I've spoken to has started thinking to themselves. If there are two platoons combined as one, who's in charge? What happens if the armour platoon leader has one idea, and the dismounted platoon leader has a different idea? Well, there are two solutions to this. Solution one, proper training. The mounted PL is supposed to have the knowledge and discipline to know when his job is done and they can hand off to the infantry platoon leader and start taking instructions from him. Or at least requests from that infantry platoon leader to support him. There is some precedent for this from way back in the armoured cab days. Solution two, have an adjudicator. Since four platoons might be stretching the commander's span of control a little bit, the thinking is that the company commander will go with his company's main effort platoons and synchronize the one armoured and one infantry platoon, whilst the XO is doing the same for the supporting effort. Now, if so, there are probably going to be some details as yet to be worked out as to who operates and what net to avoid overloading one frequency. The other question that comes up is, well, what are all these 19 series lieutenants going to do when they're done with the platoon time if the commander is always a rifleman? The answer apparently is that there is no particular shortage of staff jobs and they can of course XO into regular armour or cavalry line companies as well. So in any case that is the basic story of the 19 Charlie and the new armoured assault company coming your direction in a couple of years. For more discussion on this concept, to include some theories like deleting the mortars in favour of an anti-armour section, see the article in the Winter 2022 issue of Armour magazine. Right, that's it. As I said, nice and short. Take care, and I'll talk to you on the next one.